Oh, that's, look at that, that's terrible. There we go, much better. It's the big expanse of my workbench, isn't it? Um, hi, everybody. Uh, happy Tuesday. Uh, I'm enjoying a lovely diet cola in my red solo cup. Uh, and today, today we have Bill. <laughs> Maybe I should begin at the beginning. Hi, uh, welcome to the cave. I'm Adam Savage. Uh, we are in week nine, I believe, of the COVID-19 lockdown. And this is a live stream from my personal space where I have been spending all of my time. Um, we're putting out five videos a week now on Tested. And uh, there's some such cool builds coming down the pike. I'm actually like behind the computer right here on the little workbench is one, two, three little tools that I spent a huge amount of time um, refining. Uh, I can't wait till these builds go live. What is that? Oh, that's the mill light. It's a little better. Um, and I built something yesterday, which is like super exciting. Uh, I know this is a tease. I apologize just to say that the building in here has been fertile. Um, and in contrast to what I said at the very beginning of the lockdown, where I was explaining that I had difficulty um, finding creative inspiration, I definitely feel uh, a, a, a surplus of that right now. That being said, I still can't read a book. I, I'm trying. I, I finished a magazine article the other day, and that felt like a triumph. But actually sitting down and reading a book or watching a whole movie Man, I'm just, yeah, the ability to do that is limited, uh, but I have a kit, so I am going to be here with you for 90 minutes or so. I'm going to get back to another one day build, um, and I'm going to start by building a kit, another Lego kit from the same makers of the spinner that I built a few weeks ago. Um, I went and I, I had two kits from the same company. And I built the spinner and I took the other kit and I put it somewhere clever, which meant that I lost it for about three weeks or so. Uh, but I just found it. And it is a really fun kit. This is a this is this is again another custom Lego kit, not official, not put out by Lego, but seriously, um, high fives to Lego uh, for not quashing this stuff. If you've ever seen any artists who deal with Barbie as subject matter, you would know that. Um, Mattel uh, does a lot of fighting with people in their cultural processing of Barbie. That's just a reality. Uh, and a lot, of a lot of companies do that. But uh, Lego seems to really uh, engender the fan community. And what I have here from Ichiban Toys is a 164-piece kit of the Orca from Jaws. Yeah. Captain Quint's boat from Jaws as a custom Lego, Lego kit. This is this is dark. This is this is his charnel boat, right? This is the boat on which he dies. Oh, spoiler alert! <laughs> Still one of the greatest movies ever made. Uh, let's get to building, and uh, well, let's get to knolling, and then we'll get to some building. Um. Uh, Again, even just, uh, I, look, I appreciate uh, individual makers making lovely versions of consumer products. Uh, and Ichiban Toys cardboard box with this wonderful photo that includes a shark fin over here. Um, it's just, it feels like you're getting something substantial. And those things matter, you know? So I appreciate what they've done. Uh, so let's see, before we even... Um, I need scissors. Let us crack the seal on these 164 pieces. Let's null them. And we will make Quince boat for 5,000 books. I value my height a lot more than 5,000 books. Books. I was thinking about this the other day. Books. That like Scottish way, it's like he's saying books, not bucks, but books. 5,000 books. Uh, okay. Um, Nolding. This one's, I feel like this one's going to be easy, but I am 
as you can imagine, I'm not a very superstitious person. And yet for me to open up with something and saying, this one's going to be easy. That just seems like bad mojo to me, you know, like it's just not going to turn out well. We used to have a thing on Mythbusters where um, the death knell of any shoot that was going well is this is going great. We should be done by lunch ever after. And, he, and no one was allowed to say that. For all the obvious reasons. I mean, you know, if mostly that, you know, when you anticipate something happening and then it doesn't happen, you get a little bent out of shape and that's completely reasonable. Here's the thing. You know what I used to hate as an employee? Ah, oh, this used to drive me crazy. When your supervisor goes, hey, I think we're doing great. We might be able to cut out early. And then you start thinking about what cutting out early is going to mean to your day. You're going to go home. You're going to take care of some stuff. You've got some things you want to do. You would call a friend and all that. And then it turns out that, well, you're not going home early. See, that's, it's not superstition to not want to put yourself into an anticipatory mood where the, you know, where when what you anticipate doesn't happen, you become all um, uh, bent about it. Like that's, that's real. Like that's not a, I, I really used to unhinge me when I had supervisors who did that. I didn't have many luckily. And look, film work is film work. When you're on set, all bets are off, right? That, that's totally true. But I think there was one time we were on, a, on episode two in the droid factory. I was working with Marty Rosenberg and Charlie Bailey on, uh, on that set, which we were like building shot by shot. It was really cool. Uh, and it was tense. We were doing 10 hour days. Were we doing six days a week? I can't remember if we were doing six days a week, but we might've been doing six days a week. The boys were like a year old. Yeah. Something like that. And, um, that was brutal. That was brutal to do like weeks and weeks and weeks of 10 hour days. After you do weeks of 10 hour days and then you do eight hour days, it just feels like you're on vacation. You're like, why would anyone ever complain about this? Uh, but we were on this shoot, and at one point, <laughs> I think Marty was like, I think we might be able to cut out early. And then we didn't cut out early. Um, Marty is a perfectionist. It's totally understandable. That's, that is, he is a DP, and you got to give them their due. Uh, but boy, was I unhappy about that. Um, I will tell you a funny story about that shoot, because um, it's the only time I met Kathleen Kennedy. Oh, right. This is how this all ties together. The only time I've ever officially met Kathleen Kennedy, I was working on a model maker on that set, Droid Factory Ep2. And Marty says, I think, maybe it's not even Marty. Marty Marty's AC Bob comes in. He's like, Marty thinks we might be able to wrap by four today. And I was so excited. I literally went like this. Who let the dogs out? And I started doing that dance like a crazy person. And everyone was looking at me kind of insane. And that's when I turned around and saw that Kathleen Kennedy and a coterie of people had just entered the room. And that's what they saw when they entered the room. Me doing that thrust hip dance and singing Who Let the Dogs Out. Yeah, I made a great impression. Uh, they knew I was destined for big things then. Anyway, we did not cut out early. Um, this seems to be, ah, my hearing aids driving me nuts today. This seems to be a very straightforward kit. There's not a ton of different kinds of pieces. It's just some, like, yeah. And I mean, I think we've been hinting at this, that I've been sorting my Legos over there. Yeah, we have been hinting. We've been talking about it. Uh, the video will go up soon. But suffice to say, I've been in a Lego consciousness for the last few weeks because we pulled down all the different boxes of my historical Legos, my childhood Legos, my kids' childhood Legos, minifigs that date back to the early 70s. You didn't know there were minifigs. There weren't the minifigs you knew in the 70s. In fact, the first set of minifigs that were even close to what you know as minifigs were like these featureless, like armless little like mannequins with blank faces. Yeah, it was really bleak. 
All right. Uh, but uh, suffice to say, do I say that a lot? I do. I say that a lot. I also say it's a long way of saying I also love the term non-trivial. We all have our conversational tics. But the people who really suffer because of them <laughs> are our partners. Yeah, they got to listen to that same joke you make with a waiter every single time. Oh, my God. I've really been working on that. It's tough being a person. Uh, all right. This is, I'm having – so I'm doing a much less – fast and loose uh, null here simply because we have so many less pieces and also that's kind of the mood that I'm in. Ooh, gold one by one rounds. These are um, in my sorting. I ended up sorting a whole metallic colored Lego and there are some that are actually chrome plated. I found not a lot, a very, very small number in fact, but chrome plating I didn't realize was part of a, uh, some of the parts that Lego shoots. Oh my God. Um, one of their tools, I saw some photos of one of their actual tools that they use to shoot these parts. And they're masterpieces of engineering. Such love. If you want to look into some really, really intense machining, look yourself into, um, look yourself into uh, 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 injection molding, man. Because those... Those molds that they use for injection molding will make it like the more you know about the more I know about it, the more amazing it is to me that model kits happen because that just strikes me as like an insane amount of work. And it, like, seriously, what 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 tool makers do to make uh, to make the tools that shoot all of our plastic products is nothing short of miraculous. Um we used, I used to work for a toy company, Zoob, and we used to shoot our parts out in the East Bay, and I got to visit the factory a few times. I got to take my class from the Academy of Art there, um, and we got to watch how, how fast they make parts, how, uh, how difficult and expensive it can be to change colors, et cetera. It's, really, it's, a, it's a really neat it's a whole universe of engineering and aesthetics and processing. It's very cool. Um, my favorite industrial technique, though, of that of that type is tampo printing, which is you know, when you when you have printing on the side of a pen or something irregular and round. Um, they basically use this kind of modified rubber ball that they and you can actually look it up uh, online and watch videos of it, and it's just super hilarious because this rubber ball just it gets it's it's a, like a rubber stamp, so it hits ink and then hits the product, hits ink, hits the product, but it's this rubber ball, so it's like. <laughs> <coughs> it's very funny. I find it humorous. Um, okay. We are close to being finished here with the knolling. Mm. Oh, man. This thing that I built yesterday holds a lot of weight, and you can build the whole thing with a jigsaw and a drill. I'm starting to really appreciate, like how you can use some of the most complex tools or the most simple. And with uh, a little bit of knowledge, you can get to the same place. Oh, wow. There's lots of different one by one rounds here. Uh -huh. We are, we are almost there. Jaws, one of my favorite Mythbuster episodes. And uh, David Zaslov once told me after a meeting with Spielberg that Spielberg and his family greatly enjoyed the Mythbusters episode in which we busted every single myth from Jaws. Uh, he, that's a credit. Uh, I, I was delighted that he enjoyed our, our takedown of his film because it is one of my all time favorite movies. It's great. It's just a, it's a stunner of a film and still genuinely scary. Oh yeah. Okay. I, can we have some outliers out here that are all singles? Ooh, it's all on a single page here. Okay. Wow, they're just jumping right into it. Okay, so we get two of those. Wow, there's just um just stampeding right towards it, I guess. 
Um, so we do that and that. Yeah, that's yeah. This has got to be terrible to just listen to. That and that, and then that lives there, and then that lives there. <clears throat> you know, I haven't double checked this, but yeah, you know, so it's like you you ask. I have Alexa here in the shop. She's turned off right now, so she doesn't she doesn't know we're talking about her. Um, but when I ask her for, let's see. And a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. But when I ask Alexa to play me different kinds of music, it has never occurred to me to say, hey, Alexa, could you play American Top 40 with Casey Kasem? Is that something that she would do? I'm kind of curious about that. Because now that I'm making stuff with Legos, as I've said before, um, American Top 40 was exactly what I was listening to the entire time I was playing with Legos in the 70s and the 80s. Every Saturday, I would listen to the countdown. <clears throat> and back then, it was songs by like Hall and Oates and Sheena Easton and Devo. How is that supposed to attach to that? This, this. It doesn't say, but I guess there's no way to put one. Yeah, that's that's it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, just that I have a real nostalgia for American Top 40 radio. And it only just occurred to me during this broadcast to ask Alexa if she'd be willing to play me some. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Casey Kasem was just a fixture on the radio when I was a kid. Uh, and there's this great tape of him screaming. Oh my God, the yelling tape. <laughs> he gets really upset because he does a, wow, this one's tough. He gets very upset because he does a, uh, well, it's really hard to tell what happens there, but I think it's one of these. Yes. But still, uh, Ah, oh, I got that wrong. There we go. That goes like that. Um, anyway, Casey Kasem is recording the show and he does a like a happy song and then he's doing a death dedication and he gets really cheesed about it and he's yelling at his crew um, and it's shocking, right? It's, it's totally shocking, but it's also hilarious um, because it's, it's funny to hear. It's funny. <clears throat> yeah, obviously he's having one of his worst possible days, but it's still funny to hear someone you like grew up on just like completely going off. Uh, okay, and we do these two borders. Wait a second. Wait a second. Aha, aha. Ah, that's what happens. That's a six and that's a four. Because, wait. Oh, ah, I got the whole thing off by one. <clears throat> That's why I did that. All right. <laughs> those, those of you who've been watching Tested and have... I'll go get that later. Uh, <clears throat> and notice that I've been making more mistakes. Yeah, I certainly have not been making more mistakes. They're just getting filmed because I'm the cameraman. Uh, and you're watching the same thing here when I have to unbuild my Legos because I go too fast. Okay, now there's some things. There's some double stacks of the whites, which could be like barrels or some fishing equipment. <clears throat> and then there's a double stack of the golds. There's a way in which Lego artisans utilize Legos like um, the same way like an artist implies features and details with excellent pencil lines, you know, like Mobius. Like look at Mobius's work, the amount of detail that he, these gold pieces are, ah, 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 there it is. <laughs> um, 
the amount that Mobius, Jean Giraud, uh, the comic book artist who started heavy metal, the amount that he is able to do with a single line, I, I guess I'm reminded of, oh, it's that's the that's like a coffee table. Nice. Um, that reminds me of what Lego artisans do, right? They imply detail sometimes in their builds. So that goes on the second rung of that. And then one of the little black one singles goes there. Uh, yep. So. <clears throat> uh, I also like the fact that Ichiban Toys includes some extra parts and pieces and bits and bobs. Oh, there's a sticker? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where's the sticker? There's supposed to be an Orca sticker. Where is it? Mm -hmm. I cut this out myself, right? Luckily, I just emptied the trash, but I don't see the orca sticker. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll have to print it. <clears throat> okay, so we are okay now. So now there's more of this. Okay, right. Okay, so two threes. They're doing some outlining on these directions, which is helping greatly in me parsing. Oh, I got to go get that other red six. It's a three and a four. Wait, that's a three and that's a four. It's like that. Three and a four. And is that a six? It goes all the way out? Okay. And then there's more. Oh, okay. Oh, this is nice. They're doing this kind of stepped both sides like this. And that guy. Oh, right. That lives there. That lives up against it. Okay, I think I think that's step three. I think that's step four. So now what? Now three fours. Up. Uh. <clears throat> One, two, three. One. Two. A three. Yeah. Oh, and then that goes there. And now we do four, four, and a six, and a four. So four goes there. Two sixes go here. And two fours. I mean, one of the things that's so great about Jaws is the cast. Everybody in the cast is phenomenal. But Robert Shaw as Quint, why is he so scary? He's terrifying. He's sort of this complete enigma. Uh, and he's delightfully scary. It's somehow really important. Even though he's not the villain, there's an aspect to him that feels like he's part of the villainy, right? Like, I don't know. This just... The, the, the whole sequence in which he's talking about going down on the Indianapolis, a scene apparently written by Spielberg, rewritten by John Milius, rewritten by Robert Shaw. I mean, just a, a stunning collaboration. Shark's eyes have a black eyes like a doll's eyes. Um, I uh, used to work with a wonderful art director, model maker named Sarah Anderson. At Colossal, Colossal Pictures. Uh, Sarah's a delightful human being and an excellent designer and maker of things. Um, and huh. and uh, Sarah's brother, Scott, 
was one of the shark researchers on the Farallon Islands. So we talked about Jaws a lot. This is that's 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 the TLDR. Um, we talked about Jaws a lot because she referred to Scott as her quote, as her shark brother. <laughs> This is like, like 93 to 92, 93. Um, yeah. It, you, the, model making is an industry in which you end up having a weird intimacy with your coworkers because you're doing this, like so much of the time, you're just doing this crushingly tedious work next to each other and sort of grinding through it and like just sitting there sharing stories. Um, sitting there in the paint booth at ILM with Lauren Hillman, Melanie Wayless, Peggy Raster, and Lauren Vote listening to crazy stories about Lauren. Yeah. Okay, two more of those. This is the the masted structure. <clears throat> okay. That was step. Okay, that's seven, eight, nine, and ten. So now step 11 is this whole weird business. Ooh, ooh, oh, that's cool. Okay, so this is the front piece of the boat where Quint stands when he um, fires the, the harpoon into the shark. One of the... Um, one of the true delights of Jaws, look, I know we love the soundtrack, um, but the soundtrack is so much more than bum, 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 Like, that to me is, it's amazing and, like, super iconic. But if you listen to that score while the movie's playing, like, when they're chasing the shark, it is, like, the best pirate music ever written. It's, like, just all of this super, it's awesome. It's a fabulous score. Uh Okay, and then one of the... nope, I'm getting this totally wrong. These are backwards. There we go. And then this one lives in the center and comes up. Oh, is that a legal connection? I wonder. Interesting. Okay, but ah. So is it really? Ah, oh, so it is. It is a, okay, so that to that to that to that. These come up and join this to become the railing at the front of the boat. Very, very, very clever solution. That is delightful. Um, so that is steps 11 and 12. 13. Ooh, it's time to add some glass. Oh, there's the solid one. And there's the one with the hole in it. Then we've got... Wait a second. What am I forgetting here? Oh, oh, I see. I missed something. These guys. Excellent. Okay. Ah, and I got that wrong. I put those on too early. There's also two of these. Then these two. Okay, so now we get the glass on there. Two, three, four. Yep, okay, nice. Everything's at the right level. Feels like we're not screwing it up. Step 14. Ah, okay. We put the cap on the cabin. When I grew, I grew up going to Cape Cod in the summers, uh, we had a house on Wakoit Bay, 
uh, that my great grandmother bought in 1900. Uh, and um, you could see Martha's Vineyard from our deck. And we used to go all the time. My brother lived in Vineyard Haven. Um, and uh, when you went to Martha's Vineyard, when I was a kid, you could still see the remains of the orca because they had the boat in, on which Quint dies. Um, the boat on which Quint dies was a, um, they built like half of it. And then they built some of it out of balsa wood that the shark could chew up. That's what I was told. Anyway, uh, it was sitting there on the beach, like on its side on the beach. It was always like one of the things you noted and pointed out when you went there. Okay. I don't know if it's still there. It was really fun when we made our Mythbusters episode because I did get to, uh, ah, no, these go down one. Um, I did get the, uh, an, a collector who owned um, some of the original barrels actually sent them to us for the episode. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at some old photos because I was uh, calling up uh, some Mythbuster builds that I liked. And uh, is that set 15? Is that everything? Oh, no, there's those. Um, speaking of the barrels, that's what these yellow things are out on the front. These are the flotation barrels that Quint shoots the shark with. Um, that's a lovely detail. Of course you had to add that detail. Okay. Oh, these are boat lights. Red, right, return. Um, they go there. And there. And then, and then, no, and then, uh, that goes there, right? And those guys live up there. Yep, that's 16. Now it wants me to use four of these. And yet I don't have four. Hang on. Am I getting everything right here? Ah, okay. So these guys live there. This one's in the center. Two of these go here. The gray one sits there. The steering wheel for the boat sits there. We're, we're really close here. This is about as fast as a build happens in the world, man. Okay. Then we turn this around. <laughs> uh, apparently one of my parts might have rolled off, but we'll see. We'll see if I can get this going. And that, like there, yeah. And then... This guy, how does this work? One, two, three. I might have to go get a part. Let's see here. Uh, those, right, okay, so those are on there. And... This guy, so it goes one, two, and I think, and then four. Back, one, two, three, four, and then on top of the four goes the mast. Yep, and then this comes up like that. Ah. This comes up like that. Nope, the other way. And I'm missing, okay, right, one did roll. Hey, ah, how often do you look down and the very first place you look, you find the thing you needed? Right, but where does this thing go? Where does this thing live? Come on. Do, 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 do. Ah, there, that's where it lives. And then this one lives on top. And ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> But I value my hide a lot more than 5,000 books. Captain Quince, Orca, 
the boat from Jaws, the deepest cut Lego kit I have in my collection thus far. And that's a fairly high bar. Uh, Ichiban Toys, beautiful effort. I am like super, super psyched about this. It's a lovely build. Thank you so much for joining me for this. I hope it was as soothing for you as it was for me. We have to stick together in all this, man. Hey, uh, also, wear those masks. Wear those masks. It's common courtesy. It's humanity. Yeah, just wear those masks. It's a good thing. If we all wore masks, we'd have a significant effect on this puppy, even before a vaccine. That's how to do it. Wear the masks. All right. That's my, uh, that's my PSA. Yeah, I don't think I have anything more to say. It shouldn't be that controversial. It's not that, it's not that big a deal. Wear those masks. Stop those water droplets from leaving your face and entering the lungs of people around you. Good God. Okay.